Hi everyone, this is Marie Palacios here at the Funding for Good Home Office. Today our blog, blog topic is how board term limits help keep your board from becoming stagnant. We are in heavy prep mode for our upcoming conference in Charlotte called Thrive 2018 and that conference is all about board development. So this week We've just been really spending a lot of time with participants, those who have reached us out to us about board topics, and we're seeing a common thread. Boards are becoming stagnant. People are frustrated because they feel like they can't get board members out of their seat. They feel like their board meetings are simple reports and just really frustrated at the end of the day. The first course question we like to ask is, what are your term limits? So a lot of times people get burned out or they just get comfortable on a board, um, on a board of directors. One of the ways to avoid that is establishing very clear term limits. We here at Funding for Look Good prefer a three-year board term limit for the organizations we serve for the following reason. If as a new board member I come on and I say, you know what, this is an exciting mission. My first year is probably going to be spent getting to know the organization, getting to know the programs, and learning how I might engage as a more effective board member. Year two, I'm gonna step up my game. I'm gonna take some responsibility. I might help lead a fundraiser. I might be out in the community as an ambassador. And if a term limit only lasts two years, then that's kind of the end of my run. So a three-year term limit would allow me to step up and really take on a leadership role, whether it be chair a campaign, whether it be become a board chair or a vice chair or an, another executive board member, I can take a leadership role and be more impactful for the organization by mentoring and bringing on a new group of leaders. So a three-year board limit allows organizations to create leaderships, plan for secession, without burdening potential board members with longer term limits that we see. Sorry, I'm getting a little choked up. This is a really exciting topic for me. But five years might be too long for some of you. Two years might be too short. Three is that happy medium. For those of you who say, you know what, we've had board members who've been serving for 20 years. We don't know how to get them off the board. They're great individuals, but they just have, they've just tuned out as far as board meetings are concerned. This is a great way to hold your board members responsible. Three year term limits. So consider three year term limits and then consider allowing board members to renew their term for another year. So essentially board members could serve six consecutive years and then they would be required to take one year off for a break or a sabbatical. That one year off serves a lot of purposes. One, it allows the board of directors to determine what their new dynamic is as board members rotate off. Two, it allows those board members to really evaluate were they being productive in their role? How are they gonna go out in the community? Maybe they just need a rest. Six years is a long time to serve on a board. So giving that one year rest benefits the organization as well as the board member who's participating and contributing to your cause. So if you are looking for quick ways to engage your board, make sure that everyone's being productive, start with the very, the very basics, and that is what are your terms? What do you expect from your board members? And then if you're looking for more tips on engaging board members and board meetings and things like that, be sure to check out Funding for Goods blogs for board activities to keep your board from getting bored.